I'm getting a medal, and it's for all the uh, things I've done to to promote uh, tolerance. And uh, they, you know, they figured they'd give me a medal at the. It's at the Lincoln Theater. It'll be on June 5th. What does that mean to you? Well, it's nice. You know, it's nice to be recognized. It, it was kind of out of the blue, um, but uh, you know, we we got contacted. Uh, by the president's office, and they, they said that uh, this medal was imminent. Now, regarding your documentary uh, on the shoulders of giants, you had talked to some of the people out here. You compared it to moving a glacier in terms of just the process. Can you just kind of take us through just everything you need to do and the research and putting everything together as far as that goes? Well, um, in order to get this documentary done, first we had to get the money. So. We started in um, 2005 with the idea, and uh, I guess 2006 we started trying to raise the money. We raised it from uh, uh, private uh, investors, and you know, at that point I thought, "Geez, the hard part is done." Um, little did I know that uh, the, the tough part was just beginning. You know, getting it together, because you know sometimes when you try to get people to do something, they have to share your vision and understand it. And if that doesn't work, the project doesn't work. So we, we had to uh, deal with a couple of false starts. And uh, that really uh, put us back uh, about two years. This, this would have come out two years ago if, if we had uh, actually uh, found the right people at the right time. Finally, we got to put the right people in place and uh, we got it done. I was intrigued, and so I think one of the audience members mentioned just, you know, the lack of accessible film. You had some of it, but, you know, being able to make up for it with pictures and, and interviews and all that. And, and I was wondering how you were able to put all that together. Well, um, because we didn't have a lot of footage of, of the Wrens, we, we were so lucky. We found uh, about 40 seconds of film of the Wrens. And it just coincidentally happened to be of the championship team. A, a, a tremendous stroke of luck. We got it from a rabbi who lives in upstate New York. He's a basketball maniac. He just gave it to us. He said, here, take it. He didn't know who had shot it. We don't know who to attribute it to. But somebody shot the Wrens, uh, and uh, they had this footage. But we had to fill everything else in uh, just as best we could. So we were able to get a, a really good artist named Justin Boa to do the, the paintings. And uh, we got uh, Puggy Bell's uh, photographs that he took on the road when he was with the Wrens. All those photographs of the guys just on the road, that was uh, Puggy Bell took those, uh, and they were in his family album. And uh, his son, uh, Richie Bell, was, was kind enough to uh, give them to us. It really helped... Uh, make the film valid, you know, like we had pictures of the bus that they traveled on and just the various places that they went and, uh, you know, some of the things that they did away from the game. It, it really gave it uh, uh, some uh, a, a great flavor. Right. Now, the you described the Harlem Wrens as the best team you never heard of. Uh, you mentioned in the documentary just their no-nonsense approach to the game, uh, their suffocating defense. I'd also looked up their record at least from my understanding, I think was they won 2,588 games, lost only 529. What what made them so dominant like that? What did they have that allowed them to to excel so well there? I think that the the reason that they were so successful is they saw where the game was going. Okay, you, 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 if you play the game as everyone else is playing it, you, you're just uh, another face in the crowd. But if you have an idea of where the game's going. Um, your team stands out. I, I, the, I think of uh, Bill Walsh with in, in football with the West Coast offense, and um, it, it, you know it was uh, 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 the next phase of where the game was going, and his teams were so successful because of it. And I, I think that's the, the same thing with the Rens. You know, the speed, the, the passing game, uh, not dribbling the ball, just moving it, and and having all the guys in constant motion and getting their shots that way really was uh, several steps ahead of where everybody else was at that point. When you're going through the research process, watching their own film and all that, were there any players that, that you saw on that team to remind you of any of the modern ones today, or at least when you were playing or right now? Well, we didn't have enough footage really to assess what they were doing physically, right. but everything I heard about 
um, uh, Pop Gates told me that he was a cut above just in, in the same way that uh, Michael Jordan was a cut above or Oscar Robertson or Elgin Baylor or LeBron James. Uh, Pop Gates was that kind of player in, in his era. Now, uh, you talked earlier about uh, junior year of high school. That's when you kind of was very intrigued and interested in just history in general. I think you'd mentioned at one point you were considering being a history teacher. What, what, what is it about that subject that really interests you? Well, um, I was raised in Manhattan, and um, the northern end of Manhattan was a Revolutionary War battlefield. That's where that's the last part of uh, Manhattan that the uh, Continental Army held before they had to escape across the Hudson River into New Jersey and go down to Valley Forge. And they, they fought a battle up there. And as a kid, I, we would find arrowheads and old bottles and musket balls and stuff, especially after it rained. And um, it's also the place where Henry Hudson made his landfall when he discovered uh, Upper New York Bay and the Hudson River. So, you know, I, because of that, I was always aware of the fact that people had come here before me and um, what they did really was this, had a significant impact on my life. You know, that whole connection of history just was something that uh, I understood at an early age uh, just because of where I live. What, what feedback have you gotten just from, I mean, the, the NBA players, former NBA players that you've interviewed and just people who've watched this as far as, like, what this means for the sport, the story that you're telling with the Har Harlem Rens? Everybody that's uh, seen this has said that uh, it, it really helps them understand how the game got to where it is today and, you know, all of the things that they didn't understand about what people had to go to to get to this point where we have this wonderful game where you can come out and make all this money and become famous. It, it wasn't always like that, especially for black Americans who were uh, kept out of uh, the mainstream of American life. So the fact that uh, people like the Wrens uh, played so hard and showed the whole basketball-loving public that the best athletes were not all playing in the established leagues, that really helped uh, change things and made people uh, say, hey, you know, how come uh, Sweetwater Clifton isn't playing in the NBA? He belongs there. 1950, he was one of the first people to, to integrate, integrate the NBA. Um, any other projects uh, you have coming up or, or in the works or things that you're thinking of doing later on? Uh, at this point, um, we're just trying to, to deal with this. Um, as you might have heard me mention, we're, we're trying to make the best of our 15 minutes of fame. Right. You know, and uh, you know, as new filmmakers, um, it's all new to me. Um, I, I had no idea. I, I've written a number of books that have been well received, but doing a film and you know, being a rookie at that and coming out and, and, and doing well like this, getting good critical reviews, it's a uh, it's it's a great opportunity. So I, I don't want to uh, to uh, to blow anything in, in terms of. Uh, being able to take the next step. Right. But uh, so lastly, I mean, you kind of alluded to this a little bit with the research project, but you mentioned that you're kind of a rookie to this. What, what did you learn through this whole process as far as what it entails and, and all that? Well, uh, you know, like most uh, uh, efforts, it's all about teamwork, you know, having the right people in place and, and understanding what you want to say, uh, not trying to go about it piecemeal. I mean, you really, it's like a, a military campaign. You really have to understand uh, what your potential is and uh, have, have the right people with you that uh, can, can execute your vision.